Mm. Beautiful Annapolis, Maryland, our capital. If there's a place I would, if I had the money <clears throat> to move there without hesitation, it is right at the edge of the river and you can cross on the Bay Bridge if you want to go to the eastern eastern shore and, and you know enjoy the beach, the real beach facing the Atlantic, as well as other things that you can do there. And of course, water, water and water. I love it. I love it. Anyway, um, we recently went there with Nathan and took him on a boat um, ride. That was the last of the season, so it wasn't a very long one. But he said he didn't like riding on boats. I, I could not believe it. So that's out of the question for the future, for any future uh, excursions with the boy. But anyway, he will be 12. What is today? The 7th. He's got ten, nine more days for his birthday, and he will become a 12-year-old. That's hard to even comprehend when I just remember holding him as a little baby. Since he was like two months old, I've watched that boy grow. Anyway, today my son is going to come over. Yesterday he was already also here. We're watching WrestleMania. Yes, yes. He is a fan, and so so am I. My dad and I used to watch WWF back in the day. But anyway, we are here today. We have a lot of topics to cover. It's a beautiful day outside, like 57 degrees, and partly sunny, not too hot, not too cold. It's not windy at all, and so gorgeous, gorgeous. If you had to go out, this would be the perfect day to do so. So I want to go ahead and quickly, uh, we have 25 on board already let me go ahead and jump over to the chat and see who came first and you guys know who that is nigel waters always he was here at 10 35 my time um as you can see he is from wales uk canon pro 300 oem inks Humage ultimate color monkey and canon 2000d camera and i since he says he uses OEM, I want to share with you guys. I just received a package from a viewer who wants me to try these on my 8550. And you guys know that I've been sort of against using other than OEM inks with the 8550. But these are like, and I looked them up and they were like the most expensive third-party inks that are available for the 8550 it was almost like $60 for a pack when the you know the OEM is like 88 for the 5 inks and then another 18 19 dollars for the matte black now i will not be using the matte black i'm going to go ahead and test them yeah you know me i have to i have to do it and just see if i see any kind of a different uh, output quality um it should be a very gradual change as you know it's a tank type printer so that's going to take quite a while so what i'm going to do to to maybe increase the rate where any change will occur i'm going to wait until they get very low and right now they're down to about here this one i believe that is i can't even tell what color that is but this one is pretty high so i am going to not touch the matte black i'm going to add black and gray and Anything that's, that gets really to the point where it's getting dangerously low, I'll add a little bit of that new ink and just wait, you know, do some cleaning cycles, whatever I need to do to try to move that ink toward to the, you know, toward the printhead and then just see. Of course, I will do a, a uh, standard image prior to any of my tampering to create a baseline and then I will compare it at a reasonable time. Once I see ink dropping a reasonable amount i know that it has reached the printhead and we'll test it and see i still have that photo on on luster paper sitting in my car rear window today is getting bombarded by by uh light i purposely drove nose first so that the rear window receives all of the light during the day and no change so Anyone who had questions about the longevity of 8,500 prints, of course, with OEM inks, um, so far, so good. I think I've 
bombarded that image with more light than it would receive indoors in a reasonably, you know, normal viewing environment, equivalent to like several years probably of, of just subdued household lighting. And of course, without hardly any UV light, because our incandescent light bulbs and now all of the LED light bulbs don't really have a lot of uh, UV output. So, hey, those that were, you know, wondering about these dye inks, there you go. We're going to be doing a lot of testing on different papers. I went to my back room and dug out some really odd papers. I got them here. Ah. We're going to be experimenting with some of these. I'll do that on the 8550, of course. I found some paper, a matte paper, from Staples Office Supply Store here in the U.S., this is my standard. This is my Canon Pro, this fancy paper from Canon. I'm getting ahead of myself here. This paper here. But then I found what I believe is Staples matte paper. Now, before I took the bag out and threw the wrapper years ago away, I noticed that it was made in Germany, so I have no idea who the actual paper mill is, but they make the paper for staples and a lot of their papers are also made in Germany. They're very high quality. They have, they have some regular, your photo, photo papers that are rather cheap and lightweight. Then they have their more professional level papers. They call them premium or ultra, whatever. And so those states there that they're made in Germany, that was years ago when I saw that. So today it might be a different different source. But anyway, we'll have fun doing that. Harold Goldberg, uh, Sonny Richmond, Pro 100 with all the trimmings. Martin Van Gogh from uh, Holland or Netherlands. Custom ICCs, uh, Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop DxO, LR, Lightroom plugin, Pure Raw 4, Denoise, and Nick collection those are plugins and q image ultimate lifetime photo nikon 780 from edmonton canada canon pro 1000 epson xp 15000 and the eco tank 8550 r1900 old oem ink wow that's good canon epson red river papers q image ultimate lifetime george gab west texas is here with us paul rubner you're new, my friend. Welcome um, from Colorado. You guys that are just new arrivals here, tell us tell us what printer you're using. Of course, you told us where you're watching from, and but you know I want to know what printers you are either interested in discussing or whatever, whatever you want to discuss about photo printing. But if you already have a printer, please tell us what printer model that is. Kevin Brynjarski, EcoTank. 850 or do you mean 8550 canon pro 300 xp 15,000 those are three perfect choices for printing at home fred bird ellington connecticut epson p700 commercial legal aerial photography you're a professional all right welcome my friend kevin says ecotank 8550 that's what i thought canon pro 300 and epson XP 15,000. See, see Hero uh, from the Netherlands, Canon Pro 100S, and then Miopta Opimus or Opimus. What is that? Hmm. He says, I'm using OEM inks. Okay. All right. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So let's go ahead. I'm going to remove this live stream. We'll start in a few seconds, and uh, we'll go to the first question. People are asking, and they're wondering because they see this happening. Hang on. I, I think I got a question answered here. That is a darker and larger, okay? All right. That's what we were wondering about the Optimus uh, 5. So if you've never worked in a darkroom, the enlarger is basically a projector 
projects the negative image onto photosensitive paper. You have to focus your image, your projected uh, negative image onto an easel. Then you turn it off, you insert the paper, close the easel, and expose that negative uh, projected image onto the paper for a predetermined amount. You got to do test prints and develop them. It's a lot more difficult than inkjet printer because you see your results on your screen anytime you change any kind of setting. Not so in the darkroom. You got to go through the whole processing step. And then with your lights turned on, you can see what the the result of whatever settings, you know, exposure time, f-stop, whatever. Let me see. Charlie Miller, printing GIF prints with the Epson XP 15,000 with PC inks, Nikon vintage equipment. Awesome. All right, so let's go back to this. So things like Pro 10, Pro 300, um, Pro 1000 and up. All of those printers utilize Chroma Optimizer. The 85, the 9500 also used Chroma Optimizer was the first Canon printer to do so, the Pro One as well. So is it using Chroma Optimizer like when? When does it use it? Well, you would think it uses it when you choose a shiny type surface paper, whether it is a glossy platinum gloss, super glossy, or you know any of the lusters on any of the regular glossy papers, say two, um, whatever. Uh, it uses Chrome Optimizer at a higher rate when it chooses when you choose a glossy or luster or satin or semi gloss, whatever. Anything that has a, a sheen to it will trigger the use of Chrome Optimizer, but not really. Chrome Optimizer is also used when you print on matte paper. And people are just wondering, oh my God, they're robbing me of Chrome Optimizer. I only print mostly 90% of my work is on matte paper. Why is my Chrome Optimizer disappearing? Well, it disappears because you're running cleaning cycles because you don't print enough, right? So it's running all 12 channels on a Pro 1000 during that cleaning cycle. It is also running a, say, what would that be? What other uh, other situation would use up all 12? Well, a nozzle check uses Chrome Optimizer. How about, I don't know, say you print a purge sheet. It will use Chrome Optimizer. Regardless of the paper type, it just uses a little bit less, uh, proportionally speaking, than it would when you choose some glossy type media. But why? Why does it do that? It does it because you want it to do that. Oh, why the heck would I want it to do that? You might ask yourself. Because you never want that Chroma Optimizer channel to block up, to get clogged. If you don't use it, it will get clogged. Imagine that. Yes, it will. So. It purposely uses a little bit of Chroma Optimizer, regardless what kind of media you use. Now, it will use more or less, let's just say less at first, if you choose the auto mode in the, there's a, there's a Chroma Optimizer control tab in your driver. It's located in different areas, but it's there regardless of whether it is a Pro 10 or Pro a Pro 300 or a Pro 1000, or God forbid, a Pro 1, if you still have one that works. I do. But anyway, Auto will apply Chrome Optimizer according to the density of ink on any specific region of that complete image. So it will not apply an overall code. It only applies proportional amount of Chrome Optimizer depending on the proportional amount of ink that was applied to that area. So say, for instance, something very dense with lots of deep blacks, a lot of the readings would be maybe 555, 567 dark. It will receive more chrome optimizer and very light highlights in the 250s uh, range. 255 is, is white. 
um, would receive less. And of course, a border, a border would not receive any kind of Chrome optimizer because it did not receive ink. Well, heck, that is an uneven application of Chrome optimizer, but it saves you Chrome optimizer. Okay, so if it bothers you when you look at it, you see all this gloss differential, and you say, "Well, wait a minute, I thought Chrome optimizer was specifically to reduce gloss differential, and I still see it." That's because you're using auto. If you use full application, it just applies an even coat throughout that image, but only up to the minimal printable margins. Okay, anytime you do a print to uh, fill the paper, the whole paper cannot be printed on. It only prints to the minimum printable margins or non-printable margins. The only way to go beyond that is to choose borderless. So say on Q image, you create a half inch border. You don't plan to frame this print. You plan to mount it flush, display it floating off of your wall on those edges, you will see a slightly different gloss because the full application of Chrome Optimizer will only be applied up to the non-printable margins. So how to solve that? How, to, how would you apply a total coat of Chrome Optimizer beyond the edges while still maintaining that half inch border? Choose what? Borderless. Yeah, that's the only way. Now. Let's see proof that this actually happens. In other words, when I print on matte, it will use Chrome Optimizer as well as when you print on anything that's glossy or shiny. The only way to do that is with a Pro 1000, for instance, and the so-called, um, what is this called? The Canon Accounting Manager. And I have it open. I have a bunch of jobs that have been recorded as I've been using my Pro 1000. And you will be able to see the the different rates of usage. So let's jump over to the other screen. And here we'll just go back, go back in time. This is back in uh, January. Okay, so let's look at, this is Pro Platinum. So Pro Platinum is the glossiest, most glossy paper canon makes. So we're going to double click on that. And here we will we'll be able to see color by color the amount of ink used to create whatever size print that was. Let me let me go back and look. It was 21 centimeter, 29, 21 point something. Oh, eight and a half by eleven. Sorry. So eight and a half by eleven. I'm sure I did not print edge to edge. I never do. Uh, so eight and a half by eleven glossy use this amount of ink so we're concerned with the chrome optimizer here so let's go here it used 0 0.065 ml of chrome optimizer okay and that cost me 4.5 cents 0 0.5 cents okay so let's go ahead and look at another one so matte paper right here so this will be a good comparison double click on that Chrome Optimizer, 0 0.023. It costs a penny, 0 0.6. You see that loss, a lot less, but it still used some. It has to. You don't want that Chrome Optimizer channel to freeze up on you simply because you're printing on mad and you want it not to use Chrome Optimizer. Impossible. It's not going to allow you to do that for our own good. Yeah, you may look at it this way as being wasteful. Oh, they're robbing me. No, they're not. They're saving your printhead. Okay, keep it from clogging up. So be aware that if you are, if you are keeping track of your printing costs, you're doing this for money, you have to keep track of your printing costs, and you have a Pro 1000, which you can utilize that Canon Accounting Manager software. You want to keep track of your costs. You want to know exactly how much that ink, how much that print costs to produce. You introduce the paper cost as well. It will give you the total cost of that print, okay? Not just the, the ink cost, okay? And then you quadruple that if you want to or quintuple that 
as your selling price or even more because your time is valuable as well. Tim Miller says from Louisiana that um, he's got a Pro 100 PCSE Ings with Red River, Red River Papers. Well, I bit the bullet and bought the bought two EcoTank 8550s. Sam's Club had them for five forty nine each. One I will use OEM, and the other one I'm trying Mike's PC Pigment Inks. All right, that's the way to go. If you can afford two of them, go that route. That way you can uh, enjoy. Uh, Super high longevity prints out of that with the pigment inks. Don't forget to download all of his profiles that he created with that combination. Okay, Paul Rubner, uh, P800 more matte papers mostly, but not exclusively. All right, so that is it. Now you know about Chrome Optimizer. Don't be shocked if it is used almost four times at a higher rate than anything. Uh, your grays will probably be used at a very high rate. If your printer has, say, a light version of magenta and cyan, as well as regular cyan, your grays will not be used at such a high rate because the, the gray is used for creating very gradual transitions. But in the case of printers that have a light magenta, light cyan, those two are the ones that are used for you know very gradual transitions yellow will be used quickly because there's no other yellow there's the only yellow you need yellow for any of the shades of yellow as well as orange shades leading to red red is half magenta half yellow and even as you're going toward the magenta side of things you're still going to use a little bit of yellow depending on what kind of magenta tone you're producing so yellow is a is a a, a very um Popular color, let's just say, for printers. Grays will come into play here. Okay. Gray is the one I use the most. Empty. You see that where the others. In this case, look how much yellow I have left. This is a second set already. Okay. So, yeah. Keep track of who or what you use the most and order more of that color to keep yourself always, always having uh, ink, you know, ready to be used. Uh, unfortunately, I think these kits come as a complete kit, and I really don't see too many people selling individual bottles unless you're buying third party, which is what my friend sent me. These are supposed to be good. They have a good rating on Amazon. Others that I have seen are like a third of the price of this. And I just cannot trust using something as cheap as that. This is this is only like probably, this is like 75% of the original price for OEM. So we'll see how good they are. Hey, what can I have? What, what do I have to lose? Just test them and see what happens. It should not give any kind of issues with the printer. Uh, it just shows us, you know, what kind of quality this is. Uh, ink set can produce and uh, if it's good then i'll recommend it if it's not then i won't i'll just suck the inks out and proceed with uh, regular oem all right speaking about that so i got a call a guy with an 8550 that he bought and it had sublimation inks in it and i went well you're going to be doing sublimation. He said, but I don't want to do sublimation. I want to do normal photo printer. I said, oh, boy, you better be looking for somebody selling, you know, either a inbox and they don't want it for some reason or look like the gentleman who just bought two of them. They're selling for about five something now uh, in a lot of places, especially your big lot stores. And buy one of those and set it up with OEM inks. There is a process that you could possibly go through. It's just going to be costly and it's going to take you a ton of time and yeah, effort as well. So what might that be? Well, you can literally open up the lid. The, the ports for each tank, they have a flapper valve. So the bottle, 
the bottle of ink enters and dislodges that little flapper and allows ink to flow. You could very gently with a long needle, I'm talking something like that long, four inches at least, and a syringe and individually tank by tank suck out all of the sublimation ink um put some i don't know water possibly with a little bit of ammonia in there i would say windex but then you don't want to get windex through the uh, actual ink lines system at this point you may end up having to do that i don't know because sublimation ink is just so so um it it tends to coat the ink lines okay really it does i can prove it mine my sublimation printer that i didn't use for like a year it became syrup in there in those ink lines so anyway add something suck it back out add water suck it back out until you got those tanks clean and then add a little bit of the uh, oem ink or whatever ink you choose to use Run a cleaning cycle, nozzle check, cleaning cycle, nozzle check, cleaning cycle, nozzle check. Okay. You know what, you know, sublimation inks do not print the way that you would expect photo inks to print. Black is brown. And the other colors don't really match visually. So once you see the original sublimation ink nozzle check and then the photo ink nozzle check, that means that. At that point, maybe, and I say maybe, you were able to flush out the sublimation ink. It'll have a remnant of that for quite a while, probably. But it is not, it's not impossible to flush a sublimation ink uh, tank type printer. If it was a printer with cartridges, it'd be a lot easier. You throw those cartridges out, you get a set of refillables. Fill them up with photo ink, cleaning cycle. Just use up that whole amount of ink just for cleaning cycles and then redo the whole setup again with some fresh ink. That should work. It's not recommended. People say once you go sublimation, you can't go back to photo. It's true in a certain way. They're tenacious inks, really, really bad. And if you don't print often, they clog like hell. Okay. So you got to be able to use those dedicated sublimation printers pretty much constantly you cannot even wait a couple of days you have to print 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 produce a lot of cups a lot of mugs produce a lot of t-shirts a lot of aluminum prints or whatever else you print on okay you think people are i i went to my michael's the other day michael's uh, craft store they sell tiles now that are you know sublimation tiles they're coated with uh the polyester resin and so they're ready to be used. Um, very popular thing now. So, but once you, like I said, once you go sublimation, it's very difficult. So the idea of an 8550, you can go from photo to sublimation, but really not backwards. It's, it's very difficult. It'll take you forever. And you may still have, even after several tank refills, you will still have a bit of that sublimation encoding the inner lines of your system, your ink delivery system pain in the butt believe me by the way folks i'm going to be doing let me show you what this looks like so this is my my topics this is the ones i did for last week i'm going to be producing individual videos that i will be posting periodically during the week i like to do it every night but i just can't okay so if i get three in a week that's probably really good for me so every one of these topics i'll go into much greater detail if I forget to say something here while we are live, remember, I can edit so I can fix errors. I can add things. If I missed uh, describing something, I can add to it. So every one of these topics will be repeated as individual videos. And that, that will keep my, my video upload more regularly and uh, YouTube happier, the algorithm. You know what I mean? So that's that's my plan to do that. All right. So that covers that now yet another print with marks and ink rubs on the surface how to reduce the possibility of this okay 
Let me show you what that photo looks like. When this happens to people, they they just love they lose their mind. Okay, let me pop this over here. They have no idea what is causing this. They freak out, as you can see right there. And if we look closely, notice that this paper tends to have. Look at the way that the black gunky ink was rubbed on. So this is a high spot. These are all high spots. This is a high spot right there. Another high spot. This is a a very um, texture type paper. So unlike say Canon Platinum, which is smooth as glass, this has bumps. This is like a, a field of little mountains and valleys. Okay, if you look at it at a microscopic level, if you're flying over it, it's nothing but mountains and valleys. So. This is not a brand paper for Canon or Epson. This is a third-party paper. So as I explained prior, the gap settings that have to be maintained, in other words, you cannot have a huge gap, otherwise your spray of every drop will, be, will spread out more. It will be like if you had a can spray, there is a nominal distance when your spray painting something with a spray can. So if I'm using this, I don't want to spray from three feet away. It's hardly going to drop any ink on the surface of what I'm trying to uh, cover uh, with this spray can. So if I, if I hold it too closely, it's going to create puddles because the amount of spray is going to be the same. Whether it is two inches away or three feet away, it's the same. When you're three feet away, is going to spread more, try to cover more area, and the density level will be very, very low. So there is a nominal distance for a printhead nozzle plate to float or glide over the surface of the paper. That is maintained. And you say, well, wait a minute, there's different thicknesses of paper. Right, there is. So each company that produces a driver which contains a number of media types, has already calibrated that. It's a media configuration. So they take into account the thickness. So a thicker paper that has a Canon name, and you can find it on that media menu, will cause the printhead to change the gap to the nominal distance. Again, a thin paper that is listed on the media in the media. Uh, choice menu again thinner the gap will shrink but it's always maintained let's just say 15 thousandths of an inch if that is the nominal distance no matter how thick or thin or whatever the paper is each one of those media configuration settings in other words the media type that you choose will adjust that head distance and it will maintain that gap at a steady um, gap thickness so now i'm using third party papers and i got a thick texture paper and it tells me to use some kind of matte paper that is found in my canon drop down menu or my epson media drop down menu well guess what my paper might be thicker than the paper that they say that they recommend i use the paper setting or choice that they tell me I should use. Bingo. The gap is set to a thinner or a narrower amount. And if that paper curls or buckles even in the slightest, notice this is a very dense area. Guess what? Dense areas in some of these papers require higher ink density to create that level of denseness. Is that a word? Anyway, so it will cause the paper to buckle upwards. They cannot buckle downwards because there's no room. It will buckle up, and the gap will be severed, if you will. The printhead will beautifully glide over it and scrape itself onto the surface of that paper. Look at that. You see that? This is a texture paper. And check out the edge. It's not sharp. There is some uh, wicking taking place here. So 
I don't know what kind of paper this is. I don't know what kind of settings the user utilized, but this is not optimal, okay? Not optimal at all. So let's go ahead and cover what it takes to at least solve some of this problem. And let's let's go to let's go to the Pro 1000. It's probably the easiest one to deal with. Epson allows you on certain printers to adjust the paper gap, paper to print it gap. Um, but most of the time, you know, there's no easy way to get to that type of adjustment. Let me go ahead and open my control panel and we'll go ahead and open the Epson Pro 1000. There is one simple setting in the Pro 1000, the Pro 10, the Pro 100, the Pro 200, any of the Pro whatever Canon printers. It's called avoid paper abrasion, okay? That's what you use. And uh, let me see. Let me find it. So I'm going to get my Pro 1000. Open it. We'll pop it over to the other side. And I'll show you a couple of things as well that exist there. With the Pro 1000, it's a little bit different. I got to find exactly where that, because I just recently had to set it to that, that type of uh, choice. It's the only one that's different than any of the other printers. Main to do 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 advanced settings. Okay, here we go. Every other Canon printer, except for the Pro 1000 and the professional versions, have that option located in a different area. So basically, when you go to your uh, preferences, you're going to see this on Windows. I don't know what it looks like on Mac. Then you're going to go to this page here, and we're going to go ahead and, I'm sorry, to main. And we're going to go to advanced settings. And then here, paper vacuum. You can set that to default or no vacuum. You want vacuum, believe me. Here, head height. So default will be handled by the paper type that you choose. It will adjust itself to provide the same gap uh, distance, whether it's a thin paper or a thick paper, but but only for Canon papers. They're the only ones that have been calibrated into this system. Well, in my situation, I have others, and I'll show you what that looks like a bit later. Um, so you're going to go to here and click on Avoid Paper Abrasion. And if you set that as a default by simply clicking OK, it's going to then set that gap higher, but to a point where it's not so high that it's going to be you know, detrimental to your print quality. So that is how I was able to basically eliminate any kind of defects that my Red River, Barita, um, what is it called? San Gabriel 1.0. So this continue paper, but it is absolutely fabulous. I have some over there. This is what I'm using exclusively to print my friend's photographs. No, no defects anywhere. You can see the surface. So it was able to produce a perfectly uh, smooth and buckle-free result, whereas using the normal mode, I had some issues. Dark areas were receiving, you know, definitely this kind of paper receives a higher density level amount, unfortunately. So, hey, you have to use this type of a, um, basically another option, and that is to avoid paper abrasion, okay? So once you do that, just save it. You're okay. If you're using QImage and you save that setting, when you set that up for avoid paper abrasion, 
QMH will remember it and will apply it for any any future jobs. Okay, so that is why that is cost. It, it it will either be something mechanical like the paper curling, and normally that will show up in the leading edges corners that is, or the trailing edges the corners as well, because those are not supported as the paper is beginning to print, and as the paper has finished and it's almost finishing printing. That's when you will see those errors. If you see it along the, the middle of the paper, that's paper buckling, okay? That's the buckling of the paper due to high density um, areas. In other words, very dense black areas. They receive a lot more ink. The paper then gets wetter and it buckles up, especially if it's a regular, like a fiber, not a fiber, but a, um, yeah, fiber, like wood-based type papers or cotton rag type papers. Oh, those are... Those are really bad for buckling, okay? You got to really almost custom adjust your ink density levels. You can do that basically under color controls, which I recommend you never use. But in this case, you can go in color controls mode, not ICM, color control, and manually reducing the density while you run, say, standard images and determine what is the minimum amount, the minimum setting that I can use and still produce a full density result of that image. You want to use as little ink as possible and still give you the blackest black you can produce. You don't want to go wet black. That's too much ink. you overdoing it then. I don't know who that was. It only ran once. Okay. All right. Hang on. It could be it could be my wife's sister. Her phone is so messed up that you, you call her. It rings once. It rings twice. Nobody, and then it stops ringing. And then she calls, it'll ring once. My wife tries to answer, it, and nothing. <laughs> She's the one that recently lost her husband a year ago. She's going through a lot of bad times right now. Okay, let's see who else is on here right now. So I think we did Ron K from New Jersey, Eco Tank 8550, QMH Ultimate. Um, Reed J. Thaler, trying to get some help on Canon Pro 1. Uh-oh, here we go. Canon Pro 1 recently acquired a Canon Pro 1 with a B200 error. Yeah, they all have them. Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, it is my sister-in-law. Okay, B200 error. My, my Pro 1 from the beginning when I was setting it up, before I even did anything, B200 error. It would not accept the printhead. I had to remove it, reinstall it, remove it, reinstall it. I called Canon. They gave me a runaround. I have to take it to the shop. I said, bull, I just bought this printer. It's brand new. You know, um, finally, it began charging the ink system. And after that, five new printheads later. Yeah, so I'm just warning you. It, it was a fabulous print producer, but a total failure for Canon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. Um, you cannot even buy uh, printheads for it anymore. So the button fix, what is the button fix? Um, there is a procedure, but the printer has to be operating. Are you getting the flashing lights? I think it's 10 alternating lights. That's the second light that's yellow flashing, and then it pauses and flashes 10 times again. Is that, if that is what you're getting, um, yeah, that's that's probably the death of the printer. Okay. Oh, I hate to I hate to have to tell people this. I really do. I got two of them, and I'm gonna end up landfill. And I got so many cartridges for it that I refill. I have chips that I can replace for them. I have inks that I can use for it. Um, and it's, it's basically useless. Um, in fact, let me, let me, why don't I go back and try to print a nozzle chick? Let's see if it's even going to work. I'll be right back. Let's see, I have some paper. Loaded. Make sure that I got paper loaded. Ah, there is a, a procedure to put it into service mode, 
Does the printer power up at all? Let me know quickly. Just tell me, Reed. Does the printer power up while you're uh, looking at it, or is it just dead and nothing happens? I'm just going to go ahead and set up a uh, nozzle check. Canon Pro 1, printing preferences. Excuse me. Let me go over here, show you guys what I'm going to be doing. Maintenance, nozzle check. And check pattern. As you can see, I got one, two, three, four, five cartridges that are low. Um, it eats ink like there's no tomorrow. If um, if you're a complainer about the Pro 1000, you have no idea how quickly um, ink is used. When you do that, you're going to get this message here. And it just tells you not to start any other operation. So I hear I hear my blower in the printer going right now. So apparently it's okay. It's going to go ahead and uh, do a cleaning cycle and waste more ink and proceed to print uh, the nozzle check. It's got internal waste ink pads, which are non-user replaceable. Uh, the printer's completely unsupported by Canon now. Completely. They just wash their hands off of it. So you're not going to get any help from anybody. It's sad. I hope you did not spend too much money on this printer, my friend. Uh, free would have been the best deal. Um, okay. So we'll just leave that alone. It's going to go ahead and do its thing. Let me go to Emmanuel from Normandy, France. Ecotank 8550, QMH1 Color Monkey, Data Color Probes. All righty. Welcome back, my friend. Let me move this out of the way so I can see the next. Okay. We just printed it. So let me go ahead and get it. No, it's still doing its thing. Wasting whatever ink I have left. Yeah, once I run out of this ink, that's it. I'm not going to deal with this anymore. They're just going to sit there, um, and I have to call my local recycling center and set up a date where they can come pick them up because I, I don't want to drive to the dump. It's too far. But, yeah, that'll make room for other things that I need to uh, put up on my shelves. Tim, Tim Miller says, do you keep your EcoTank? 8550 on all the time. Absolutely. Yes. It goes to sleep. It doesn't have to be powered off. It goes to sleep, and it's not like a it's not like a Canon printer that if it goes to sleep and say you wait a day, will run a clean cycle before you begin to start. I haven't used this in I really don't know how long. Um, possibly last Sunday. Okay. Or last Saturday. We'll wake it up. Close that. Yes, that's the last nozzle check I did. We're going to do a nozzle check because we want to make sure it is printing correctly. So it was on, I mean off, basically sleeping all week. So let's see what happens. Now, the levels that are seen there, it started printing right away. The levels that are seen here will not necessarily match the levels that the so-called ink level display will show. It's a, it's a non-match, uh, so don't worry about it. Just, just keep these above empty, basically. There you go. So you see, had this been a Canon printer, just like the other one, it's whirling around right now. Look at, I got a perfect nozzle check. That's it. I'm ready to print. So, like I said, we're going to be doing some tests. Here is 
that good canon paper. I have this separate because I want to show you how I go about using that. But I, I'm also then going to compare it to that Staples mat and see. I want to do a, 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 a um, standard image and compare it to this one. This is like my super control right here. Okay. This is the best I've ever seen. That Canon Pro Paper on the 8550 with my my uh, custom ICC profile. I just heard that finish printing. Let me go get it. So I'm not wasting paper. I printed on the other side my regular um, so-called unclog image. This is like a perch image. You create this in Q image, and then you schedule the printer to uh, go ahead and print it. But this is the one I just printed now, and no gaps anywhere. Let me turn this on. Oh, that's even worse. You can see there's no gaps. Let me turn it back off. Too much. It's very light anyway, so you're not going to really see them. And then Chrome Optimizer is here. It'll it'll print a a um, like a gray band and then it overlay. You can see it is actually raised a little bit. Chrome Optimizer, a vertical column of it. Okay, so that's it. It's printing perfectly right now. Okay, so called perfectly. Recycle this. But it, it just it just simply uses ink so so much it's ridiculous. Now there is a process of unlocking the printer's print head assembly, so you can then you know disconnect the print head uh, from it and then reinstall the new print head. But you don't know if doing that will solve the problem. You don't know how how saturated the internal ink pads were. There's, there's this, this has a cartridge you can remove and replace for like 15 bucks, maybe a little more. I forget. But anyway, there's also a way to reset those. There's also a way to replace those pads. Rick Johnson sells all that paraphernalia you need to maintain those, those printers working. They're not going to die on you. Like a Pro 100 will literally die on you. A Pro 200 will die on you. I don't know about the 300. They, some people claim there's a replaceable cartridge. Some people say, no, that's not that's not true. So I don't have one, so I cannot, you know, I don't think it does. But anyway, anything with an internal waste ink pad that cannot be reset or cannot be, cannot have its little tubes that deliver that waste ink bypassed to the outside like some Epson printers can. And then there's software that you can use to reset that counter. So instead of being at 100% or 99%, it returns it back to 0%. And as long as you're diverting the ink outside to a bottle, you're good to go. You continue using that printer. Okay. Now, Canon printers, you cannot do that. You simply cannot. Okay. So that's that may lead you to how you choose a printer okay one that allows you most of all or or yeah most of all at least for us the ability to refill it the ability to use third-party inks if you choose to do so um, as well as diverting or able to reset or at least have a user replaceable waste ink cartridge if you do not if you have internal pads and it's not an epson printer you're screwed. Once it, it gets full, that's the end of the printer. It is the messiest, God, you know, the messiest process you can think of. And you got to like literally dismantle the whole printer to get to those internal diapers and remove them and then clean the area, replace it with new pads. Do they even have pads? You see what I mean? So um, just think about those things when you choose a printer. For, for, you know, future use. And there's Rick right there. I have his link for the 
eBay store on my video descriptions. Don't forget to look at those. There's a lot of good information there, a lot of discount links for various products as well. And when you use those links, you're helping me. You're helping me continue doing this, okay? Otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll go broke. In, in other words, you get what I mean? And I'm not being facetious here. I'm being honest, okay? Let me see. Let me show you something. Let's just use the Pro One for, for this uh, demo. As you can see here, I have the maintenance tab open and cleaning cycles. So there are different levels of cleaning cycles. Let's say this is a Pro 10. Forget about it. In fact, let's just open a Pro 10. Instead of something that we're literally not really using. Whoops. Don't open it. Just right click and use the printing preferences choice. Okay. So there we go. Go to maintenance. And the Pro 10 has what? 10 channels. The Pro 1 had 12. So unlike an Epson printer, the Canon printers subdivide their sets of channels, let's just say, into either two sets or three sets or zones, one, two, or three, or A, B, C. It doesn't matter. So your normal cleaning cycle will provide you with this choice. So will the other one. It's just a deeper one. So deep cleaning will use up a lot more ink. It will possibly unclog a stubborn clog possibly uh, but you're you know you should always try your lighter less wasteful cleaning cycle first so you click on that you will then get this window now let's just say out of you know theoretically say your yellow is missing some areas yellow happens to be in group one why would i want gray photo black cyan chrome optimizer and matte black also wasted it they don't need any help they're fine unfortunately photo cyan magenta red and photo magenta exist in the same group that contains that troublesome color which is yellow but i can at least isolate and not waste ink on all the other say five extra channels one two three four five why should i waste ink on those those cartridges when i don't need to see so i can isolate my cleaning the vacuum that is generated will be applied to just this zone okay not only will it be more effective because it's using the same level of vacuum on a smaller number of channels so it's going to receive a stronger vacuum per channel, which will be more effective in possibly clearing that yellow area that's missing. So again, don't do the all, all the colors. Uh, somebody says, well, what if I have yellow as well as a cyan? Do one at a time. Treat the yellow first using zone one or group one, and then nozzle check. Oh, I cleared it. Good. I'm good to go. Now I'm going to work on my cyan. Yeah, you will use the same amount or waste the same amount of ink. But remember, you are, you are reducing the number of channels against which you apply the same amount of vacuum. So the effectiveness of the cleaning cycle will be literally doubled. Okay. If you just use all colors, the amount of vacuum is really reduced because it has to be distributed among 10 channels. You may have to run three or four cleaning cycles before you clear those two colors, okay? So always isolate the colors that you need to treat, okay, by choosing one of those choices. The Pro 1000 will have three choices, three groups, and four colors each. So it's even more effective. If you just have one channel that requires cleaning, choose that, that group, and boom. Possibly one cleaning is all that it will take. Okay. 
It's a nifty little trick that I wish Epson would have, but they don't. Anytime you run a clean cycle, every channel is affected. Alrighty. People are trying to print on plain paper now, and and basically end up. Remember the edge that I just showed you that print that had these smudges on the surface, and that edge that should have been sharp was so almost like it was leaking a bit uh, or wicking away from the sharp edge. Um, into the border of the paper. Plain paper is not coated for inkjet printing. So it's going to, of course, it's going to produce less, less sharp, if you will, less detailed results. But you know what? Will it really? Let's, let's go ahead and do something here. I'm going to print the standard image, literally, on a sheet of just regular plain paper with the 8550 now, because I'm going to choose plain paper I think it's going to trigger the black matte uh, pigment black ink, ink. And so that may result in, because pigment ink will wick less. In other words, that's, that's my theory here. So let's try that. I'm going to get a clean sheet right there. This is done. It was perfect. Back to home. All right, let's open up QImage. And I will load that. Standard image. And then we'll see. Remember, I have that premium result that I got on my uh, regular um, Canon super, super fancy uh, matte paper. So can we produce something reasonably good in other words that will look sharp enough um, so that it doesn't look like it was printed on blotter paper let's just say you're printing some flyers and you're going to use you know paper you buy at your local drugstore a ream of paper so let's go ahead and choose plain plain paper bright white paper i'm going to assign a border you've seen me do that before I'm going to load my standard image and I am simply going to tell the driver, yeah, let the driver manage color. Okay, that's it. So it's going to choose ICM and it's going to apply, I don't know what. Let's just go ahead and do that. Print it that way. I think the quality, let me see if I can improve the quality a little bit. So that may be the reason someone or some folks may not be getting the best results. So let's go ahead and go to your settings. Wait a minute, not there. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Boy, there's nothing. Nothing I can adjust. Oh, best quality right here. So you have draft, standard, high. Let's just pick high. And I got the 8550. I got some regular white paper, eight and a half by 11. Rear paper feeder and letting the driver control color. Boom. That's about as simple as you can get. Okay. We're going to match it and, and see what we get compared to the, the perfect one. Okay. I'm looking for neutrality mostly. If I get a neutral result, I'm happy. Then we'll examine the physical um, characteristics of the print, whether it is it looking like it's printed on blotter paper or looking like it's you know sharp and with full detail. We'll see. Boom, boom. All right, so we'll jump over to me. I'll leave QImage open for the time being. Thank God I didn't freeze up while it was loading. It has a tendency to do that. Here we go. Now, of course, I could have told it to use the cassette. I have paper in the cassette as well. So it's got um, 
how many choices for quality. So it's got the plain quality, and that's what you would normally use for, say, printing something like uh, just anything off the internet. Um, we'll do that. Let's do that one too. I'm going to choose um, lower quality and reprint this. So the first one coming out should be a higher quality result. We'll use standard. How about that? The one that we're using now is high. No, let's use draft. What the heck? Let's, let's go really, really low quality. We'll compare the two and see if there's any, you know, drastic difference in quality level. Again, this will be only for, you know, somebody asks you to print an invoice or you paid a bill and you're printing an invoice in return and you're going to file it. So you don't have to have photographic quality but i'm looking to see if anything like black lines or text is nice and sharp that's what that's what i would like to have if i was printing on plain paper boy that takes a long time so all right that one is loaded and I'm going to leave this alone because we're going to be doing the test on that Staples paper. So let's go back. While this is printing, we're going to discuss the next topic. Unless there's something else new here. Nope. All right. So we talked about inkjet printing with plain paper. We're going to be using that. And we're printing a photo as well. Now. Oh, this is, this is. This just came in, let's just say, breaking. This just came in the other day. A person who disabled his Pro 1000 cartridge chips. These puppies right here. Oh, these puppies right here. So they're disabled. Now you're supposed to keep track of your ink levels. Okay? Either take them out and weigh them. If they weigh above 32 grams... The cartridge is not empty. Okay, so you could add up to 112 grams total weight. It's reasonably good. I can see it coming out. It's a little bit off color. It's not color corrected at all. But anyway, so you need to find a way to control or to at least warn you when you're going to or have to refill, and that's what the ink sensor, ink sensor system is for. You get a bright white light, channel 7 requires refilling. But it's down to 20% from empty. You have a little bit of time before you have to quickly, you know, refill that cartridge. Or replace the chip. If, if you're using single-use chips, you basically replace the chip. These are what they look like right here. Replace that chip. The chip is empty. You take the chip out, out of the cartridge. Top it off to full again, replace the chip, put it back in, and you're back to a full OEM, you know, quality uh, result again. In other words, it will it will see it as a genuine chip, and so that's it. Now, what if you're using no sensor system, but you disable the chips, and you forgot, God forbid, to you know at least keep an eye on your cartridges? You can't see. You don't have that window system that they sell now, okay? And I'm going to be purchasing that. Uh, in the in, When my tax refund comes, I'm going to purchase that baby. That'll be my present. Ah, taxes. Anyway, so how do you know when to top off those cartridges? Well, you set a schedule, drip period. But you were doing other things and you forgot. Well, guess what the Pro 1000 did for this guy? It scared the living out of him it stopped printing it said the cartridge was empty and he's going wait a minute i disabled the chips of course my cartridge is empty or at least it thinks it's empty but the dumb dumb they forgot to take the cartridge out and at least weigh it so he puts it back in still gets the error takes it out and oh Gee, this feels a little bit light. No, duh. So he puts it on a scale, 32 grams. It is 
freaking empty. Okay. Guess what? Apparently, apparently, <laughs> this is awesome. Apparently, the internal compartment, which has those three sensors, stopped the printer dead on its tracks. Even when you're trying to cheat your way out of having to buy, you know, $60 cartridges, you're refilling your own, you're disabling the chips and so forth. Um, I am ever, I am never going to test this on my own. Absolutely not. This is all what they call anecdotal information or whatever the, the term is. There's no way I am going to try to duplicate that. Absolutely not. Never. And so apparently once that internal compartment became empty, the printer stopped and just basically said your cartridge is empty. Okay. He then topped it off to full, put it back in. It did a cleaning cycle and everything is back to normal. How about that? Kudos to the Pro 1000. Holy mackerel. I, I, I never understood that, okay, um, that they will allow you to do that and still save your ass from making a fatal mistake. If you get air in those ink lines, I don't even want to think of it. Okay, hang on. Okay, so here is your premium result. Okay, this is as perfect as you're going to get. The bottom one is the high quality one. On plain, the cheapest, crappiest paper. It's got a kind of a weird magenta, magenta-ish cast on the, on the um, monochrome image, the electron micrograph in the middle. But it's not that horrible. You see that? A little bit magenta. Now, let's look at quality. Let's look at, forget color um, matching at all. Let's look at the baby's faces. And look at anything that has detail. Oh, look at that. Now it looks, gee, it almost looks neutral now. Holy cow. Let me see if this looks bad. No, look at that. That's not too bad. Of course, the reds are very uh, strong here, not so here. But I'm looking for that wicking effect, the printing on crappy paper. In other words, if I print something, a flyer that has a lot of graphics, will it be good enough on this kind of paper? I think it would. I'm looking at the numbers. And this image, the numbers, the graphics are not that great a quality anyway. But if I was creating something with, say, vector art, it would be very fine, sharp lines. And I think it would be sufficiently good quality. Now, if you want to compare this, this is the quickie way of printing here. And let me see. I just saw something here. Okay. See the area here where the right here is a little bit wet. But again, it's not that bad. Look at this is high quality. This is low quality or lower quality. In fact, I think it was the quickest. No banding, so I don't have any alignment problems. Look at that. This is this is advancing like three quarters of an inch per pass. So in two passes, back and forth is printing an inch and a half worth of uh, area. And again, it looks pretty darn good. This is the high quality, it took forever to print. And this is the plane. I mean, the, what do they call that? Just, it's a very quick way of printing. But anyway, wow. So now, how can I improve on this? Well, I believe, and I remember this, I, I need to go back and check it out. I need to go to Rockville, our normal neighborhood town here, and go to Staples and see if they have inkjet paper. So it will be a plain paper that is coated, coated for inkjet, thin, um, probably if you apply too much ink density, it will buckle up a little bit, but it's, it's very nice. It produces, it's got a nice white tone, a very high white tone. In other words, the paper base 
This paper base is dull by comparison to some of these uh, papers, the, the inkjet papers. It's not photo paper, but it'll be absolutely fine for this type of printing. Look at the babies. Look at the transitions. These bands right here, you don't see any kind of a abrupt uh, density change. So same thing with right here. And let me see if I backlight it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's blocking. It's blocking around number six. So two, four, and six are basically black. Okay, there's no difference between either one. But I don't think doing this kind of a setting that I printed this with, I don't think there's any any black point compensation applied. So that may be the issue for that. All right, so let's put this away. I think I saw Mike Cheney here. So let me see what he has to say. Where's my, there we go. My cursor ran away. Mike Cheney says, found something interesting in my 8550 nozzle check on plain paper. When I rub my finger over the black, the ink smears even after 10 minutes drying. Let's see. So there should be some black here. Yeah, of course. Look at that. Yeah. Let's try that red. No, not much. Look at that. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, don't get your... That's the problem when you're printing on plain paper labels to sell your, your, your ink on. That happens to all of these all of these reseller, resellers. But does it do it on photo paper? Let's see. Now this print has dried for quite a while. Gosh, I would hate to do this. Yeah, also a little bit of a smear right there. Yeah, just don't do that. Simple as that. Don't do that to your prints. Recycling. Here we go. Are, are we on now? I think we're on. Yeah, I just saw my audio button had a red line on it. I think we're back on. Tell me if we're back on, and we'll go ahead and continue. Anyone? Are we on? If you don't tell me, I'll start singing, and you don't want that, okay? Okay, let's continue on. You guys save yourself from yeah, me singing. Okay, so large print stops midway. And my assumption is basically you're printing uh, a super large image. In other words, by that I mean a very heavy file, lots of megabytes, and you're doing it via Wi-Fi. And it will look like this. The printer basically starts printing the first half, and then it's like data stops processing. I believe QImage, and Mike is here so he can tell us, does QImage 
The reason it takes so long to queue up is because the complete file is being processed and sent to the printer rather than on the fly, if you will. So if you're using a, a, a weaker method of data transmission, whether it is Wi-Fi, and people say, oh, my Wi-Fi is fabulous. Well, you know, so is mine. And here's, here's my, here's my, um, my unit right here, my um, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. And my printer is right here. So what? One, two, three, four, five, five and a half feet away. I don't have any issues transmitting relatively large fi files. So, no, I will not sing away. No. Unless I have music in the background, then I actually sound pretty good. Okay? But we're not going to do that today. I'm not going to treat you to that horrific, um, yeah, no, not today. Maybe someday. I'll have to drink some wine prior to uh, attempting that. So part of QMH AI is that it always selects highest quality. You can turn off that feature in AI Copilot if you want to print lower quality. No, Mike, we're, I know that, but we're we're talking about the print suddenly stopping and the papers ejected, almost like data transmission was severed. Would that be caused by Wi-Fi, and would that be eliminated simply by connecting via a cable, whether it is network or whether it is a USB, okay? That's my question. No, we're not going to have you. What if you don't have them near you, okay? It's too late. You'll have to go screaming across the room looking for your earplugs. No, I'm not going to put you through that, actually. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Okay, let's change the subject. Why don't we? So what is the reason for this? Okay, I think it's because of Wi-Fi. And I told a guy, go ahead and connect it via USB, especially if you have USB 3. Uh, it, it should it should do, you know, uh, it should um, at least resolve that. Or your, what is it on your printer, on your computer that handles uh, transmission to printers? There's something that you can actually clear the cache out and, and start, in other words, you empty it. Sometimes, like, like my wife, sometimes we'll be printing on our little Canon printer upstairs and something will happen. It's not printing, so she'll send any, another job. She'll send that again. And actually, the first one is blocking the second one from actually even getting to the printer. So... Right. Okay, so he's not printing with QImage. He's the, yeah, the spooler. Sorry, that's it. So he's not he's not printing with QImage. He's printing with something, you know, either one of the Adobe applications directly from that, but he's using Wi-Fi, and uh, claims that it's in the same room as his modem or whatever. The the, the... God, I'm at a loss of words today. Um, but anyway, so you know, he's claiming that that may not be an issue. So I said, hey, listen, what do you got to lose? Plug it up by USB and then attempt it again. And if it works, that's your answer. Period. Don't 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 try to. Um, what's the word? The term when you try to. You still stick to the fact that you know you say it's it's okay. It should print. Well, dude, just plug it in via USB, and if it prints without any issues, if you print ten images after that, and none of them are spit out halfway through, then guess what? It was your Wi-Fi, whether you want to accept it or not. I mean, come on. I get these all the time. F Facebook, if you guys follow my Facebook, if you're a member and you, you can see some of those questions that are there daily, basically, um, you see that. Uh, you want to ask a question that is longer than the chat will, will take? Yeah, you can e email QImage. Um, QImage1, that's another person, not Mike. Another person handles QImage1. 
By the way, Mike, I will have you tell Andrew, I believe his name is, uh, somebody had a problem. They bought it. They purchased it. They never received the download link. Maybe that is resolved by now. I haven't heard back from him. I told the person who bought it, did you provide them with an email address? And he says, oh, yeah, but I don't know when he did that. So uh, I couldn't find a way to contact um, QMH1 to sort of pass on that information. Yeah. I mean, I use it. I even print sometimes to the Pro 1000 via Wi-Fi, and I haven't had any problems. But again, if you just see a problem, just connect it via cable. If it solves it, that's it. You resolved it. There you go. <laughs> that that must have been the reason. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and that's coming up tomorrow, I believe. I don't have the special glasses that you need, so I'm not going to care too much. I, I'll be picking up my grandson from school right about the time we're supposed to max out. And um, I've seen him before. It's not that big a deal for me. All right, so let's go ahead and try some papers. I got some weird, weird ones here. So we're going to try to match. This is a Staples paper. If you live in the USA, you know what Staples is. And it's like going to Costco and buying the 150 pack of papers. Very low cost, very uh, reasonably priced. Um, but as you can see here, I got a bunch of the Canon prints here. And they're wonderful. They're just absolutely fabulous results. It's a great combo. It's only like just under 18 bucks for 50 sheets of this stuff. I got a profile that's available for free for you to download on my Facebook um, page. But if you happen to be buying stuff at Staples, and you run into that paper. Here's all I have left. It's just a, a, a sleeve. So staple looks like this. We're going to try the glossy. I have zero profiles for any of these. So we're just going to use the driver. And Q, we'll use QImage and we'll just tell QImage to use an equivalent glossy paper from Epson. That will be available in the download or the uh, media. Um, menu. We'll check to see which is the printable side. This is the printable side. We're going to load the standard image. I don't need this anymore. This time I'm going to choose the paper that I used to create that profile, which I believe is presentation paper mat and here here you go look at that it loaded my standard my my uh custom i mean who keeps calling it loaded my custom profile automatically because it remembers that i used that last and we're going to print in presentation paper mat and letter size rear feeder in that profile boom we are ready to print this bad boy and we're going to compare it to this and let's see how competitive that result is going to be. So hopefully, I haven't done this yet, so this is going to be first time. Uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, hold on. Mike says, sounded like you bought my 8550 thing. Was normal? What? But I just printed and also check on Epson Matt. The black ink never dries. Isn't black designed for matte? That's very surprising to me. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. And I am using actually Precision Colors equivalent, which is really for the PA-100, a black matte uh, pigment ink for it. And by this point, I think I've already... No, I'm only down to maybe 
a quarter of the way from full. So maybe there's still some of the original ink left in there. We'll see. Yeah, the other five channels that are dye based. I don't know. I don't know what it is about that pigment. And you, you know what? I should check my Pro One Thousand, see if that's something that occurs, you know, every time, or or, or not, or is it, you know, only with the uh, eighty five fifties uh, pigment black ink? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I kind of know how to do that. Yeah, I kind of know how to do that. But anyway, thanks for the info, Jerry. Like I said, I haven't really had issues. Look how fast I printed. All right, here we go. So this is the one I just printed. Ooh, that feels wet. That feels very damp. And it's kind of curling in the opposite direction. This is thinner paper than this. This is thicker. Okay, this is Canon. I'm going to go to me. Hang on one sec. So this is this is Canon with my custom profile. And I use the custom profile for this too. So this is Staples coming up. So Canon, Staple. Wow. That's not too too bad. This is this is I better not mess up. I think this is staples. So staples in the front. Let's look at the strawberries. Cannon in the back. Wow. Oh boy. So now we have another. This is this is the wet one here. So now we have this is the, the, the cannon. So now we have another combination that seems to be working fine. Maybe this paper is very similar in its coating. It's just thinner, and at, at this point, still feels damp. So that's not bad at all. Wow. Let me see if it's my lighting. Nope. I don't have the most even lighting in the world, but this result is pretty good. This is Canon. I need to write down Canon. On there. Oh, it says Canon in the back. But I'm going to write it anyway. Canon. 8550. And this is going to be Staples. 8550. Staples. Can. Now, if you look at the backs, it's hard to see with this lighting, but the Staples paper has a, a whiter paper base, brighter. So, what does that mean? It probably has OBAs. I don't know. If I view this under UV, I should be able to see it. Let me see if I can see any difference in the paper base and the whites. Not much that you can actually detect visually, but. Wow, I just basically found another combination. So I'm going to go back to Staples and see if I can, you know, stack up on some of that Staples matte paper. It's wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and jump over. We're not going to do standard image. We're just going to print pretty, pretty pictures. We'll use um, this so-called Super Supreme, or no, Photo Supreme Paper Luster. Okay. It's, wait a minute. It says gloss paper and then paper luster. Hmm. Is this supposed to be another? Oh, it's, it's in French. So I, I guess luster. Okay. We'll see what the paper actually looks like. It's glossy. Okay. So we shall go ahead and load this. 
I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick a glossy paper in my Q image. How about uh, premium photo paper glossy? How about ultra premium photo paper glossy? Might as well, right? And uh, we'll let um, Q image, which did it automatically just now, uh, found the matching profile. Let me switch over. Sorry about that. So we have 8550 ultra premium photo paper glossy. And if you look here, let me open that up. Ultra premium, Epson ultra premium photo paper glossy profile. Perfect. But we, we don't want to do a boring um, standard image. Let's go ahead and choose something more interesting. Do I have anything else here? Ah, here we go. We'll first remove this. We don't want that there. And I'm going to undo cropping so I'll have a nice border. Let's go ahead and load this. And we'll see what we get. So remember, all I did, all I did, this is a strange uh, off-brand paper, not, not Epson. But I loaded. I just thought, you know, I would choose the best glossy paper that Epson has preloaded in its configurations for this printer, and that was the Ultra Premium. It automatically found the profile for me. That's QImage doing that. And I assume it's going to also control color matching or color handling to zero, to none. Yep, none. No color adjustment. Good. Let's go ahead and print. It's going to default to the highest quality. We'll leave it. We're not going to mess with that. Why would I want to lower the quality, right? So we're going to go ahead and load it. I'm looking to see, and I'm going to rely. I'm going to move this over to my monitor so that I can see it under a properly calibrated monitor. Uh, I'm not going to be able to simultaneously show you that. Uh, the way I have this set up is impossible. So I'm going to look at my result under these crappy lights and see if I get a very good match. I'm looking for a density match as well as color, color so-called color or neutrality. It began to print. Oh, let me, you can see my levels here. So my gray is actually a lot higher than that physically. So, and I think maybe it's going to ask me to refill when it gets down to nothing. Okay. Even though my tank is not really empty. Another thing we're going to try. We have some canvas here. I dug deep and I found some really office um, store type, different uh, types of materials that I bought ages ago. We'll try this. Now, I got to look at the surface and see if it's, if it's matte. Then I have to go ahead and use a, a matte uh, paper choice. Or if there's a canvas choice, I can go ahead and use that. It says compatible on all inkjet printers. Really? Okay, this looks like real canvas. Yep, that is canvas, all right. And it looks like a matte canvas. So we'll go ahead and use it under those conditions. We'll see what we get. I'll choose something really nice to print on it. Maybe one of my um, attempted paintings where I took digital images, turned them into paintings. Why am I doing this? Well, people always ask about the 8550's capabilities. What can you get away with? Okay. What can you get away with the 8550? Kind of print on this, 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 this. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're running all kinds of random materials through it. Again, just look, letting the driver control color. We don't have any kind of profiles for any of this stuff. And we'll see what it can do. You might have been answering a question. Rudy Hallam is here from sunny Los Angeles. Glad to have you, my friend. I guess you are back from your trips. Um, welcome back. Rudy is the one that creates all sorts of uh, 3D printer printed uh, products for us, like cartridge holders. In other words, to keep 
nice control of your cartridges also the bottle holders uh oh i have those already in the back already uh, being used so sorry i don't have them in the front but those are really good they're all dovetail they fit inside each other and uh, you can buy sets for your eight color printers your six color printers your 10 color printers whatever you want to buy them from or for and here it is this is printing a super high quality uh, setting automatically defaulted via Q image. So, you know, people always ask about, you know, well, does Q image really print better than, say, if I print out of Photoshop or Lightroom? Yeah, <laughs> it does. Especially if you if you go in and you actually do a little bit of extra, like adding a little bit of a defocus sharp, and it just does magic to your images, especially on a low uh, dot gain paper, like a super glossy paper. This is really super glossy, that paper I just used, by the way. You can actually sharpen it. If an image has, if it's a very subtle images, like maybe a sky with sunset like this one is, I don't want to over sharpen that, okay? But if it's an image with lots of detail and the image itself has enough pixels in it, you can go ahead and sharpen it probably more than you can get away with regular unsharp mask that you would use in most most applications and produce ridiculously uh, good results yeah almost done it's looking really really good this image as you can see very subdued colors is not an overpowering image so i want to see how this printer will reproduce that here we go by the way i was measuring with my fingernail it's advancing like a sixteenth of an inch per pass so you know it's overlapping a hell of a lot look at that Oh, God, this is good. Holy cow. Let me, I'm going to pop this over here a minute, dear, and compare it. Jeez. Yeah, it's a match. Unbelievable. So, what do we have here? Photo Supreme. I don't know what this sells for. You can probably look this up online on their website. So I'm going to, let me see if I can keep these organized by what paper I use to print them. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm going to end up with a big pile right here. The next, we'll do that canvas. I may have to babysit this. In other words, the initial uh, grab may work or may not work. Now, notice already there's a lot of curl. So what I will do is counter curl this. I want What size is this? Is this letter size? Yeah, eight and a half by 11. Ivory texture canvas. It's just 10 sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this. Make sure you have clean hands when you do this, or at least wear cotton gloves. So make sure that this is counter curl. I want it downward, not upwards. It's going, that would cause um, uh, head strikes. So we're going to try to help this out a little bit by doing that. And this is the side that I'm going to enter. Now, which side is the printable side? This side looks like it's coated. This side looks like it's raw. I'm going to put this here. And I, I will come back and figure out, as I feed it through it, what's the best way. So I am going to load...
this portrait this lady right here this has been colorized it was a black and white image and maybe i want to saturate this a little bit more let's go ahead and see if i can do that i'm just i'm simply going to add and because it's canvas i'm going to apply some um deep focus sharpening a little bit maybe just a hundred oh look at the detail oh, that's a thousand that's too much a hundred look at the detail right there let's see if we can duplicate that on canvas which is already has a a a, a pattern of uh, cloth on it let's see what happens and i'm going to increase saturation by just like 15. that will add a little bit more color maybe maybe 10 more 25. there you go that's that's fine and that'll be it that's all we're going to do okay and okay it will then reload it and now we're going to go ahead and set our media type now i have to see if 8550 even has canvas which of course it does not so what to use let's try velvet oh if i choose velvet fine art it's going to probably want to feed it to the rear feeder hmm let's use premium presentation paper mat okay let's do that and then we'll let canon i mean uh we'll let um suggest a paper profile and it should find that profile and lay it at the top right there premium presentation paper mat we'll open it make sure we have relative colorimetric and black boy compensation on and again i did not crop it i am filling it to the max if i if i decide to to print it completely let's see what happens no actually that's already um in the proper dimensions anyway so we'll just go ahead and print it then and i want to make sure when it queues up i want to make sure that i i am actually feel you know feeding it so that it does not um get caught or skewed Whoa. It grabbed it. It grabbed it. So we're we're good. It grabbed it. So that's good. That's good. I was worried about canvas here. If we get a smudge, maybe that's that's because the paper is so ridiculously bumpy and curly. We'll see what happens. Yeah, actually, that's that's not super cheap, but it's a very good quality paper. I mean, you know, Canon, uh, glossy, it's like $50 for 50 sheets equivalent. So it's a little bit less per sheet. And uh, your luster, pro luster, is about $49 as well, $49.99 for 50 sheets um sometimes when you buy a certain size you get a much better value it's like with that canon pro paper 1799 or something like that for 50 sheets eight and a half by 11 you have to choose that size if you go the 13 by 19 then the cost per sheet is just proportionally higher Oh, excuses, excuses, Mike. No, I'm kidding. We can't wait to have you, man. It's supposed to be a bad hurricane season, so I have contractors doing work, hurricane glass, generator, exactly. Yes, you cannot afford to be out of power, my friend, especially when orders come in. We're generating a lot of orders, man, aren't we? So we need to uh, spread the word, and you need to be in a safe condition. 
photo Nikon 780 says in Canada, Staples has discontinued some of the, uh, their own, their, our brand paper, photo papers, mostly carry four by six. Yeah, they do have other brands there as well, but not the same way. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Huh? Maybe I should have chosen a, like a luster, like a semi-gloss. This paper prints with a, a bit of a gloss. Look at that. And the color is, is pretty much matches that, which is awful. But I'm looking at the detail. Uh, let's look at the scarf right here. I don't know whether you can see that online, but, but anyway, you're not supposed to print with this stuff on the 8550. It's just not even, it's not even listed. So therefore it's not really recommended officially. But we just did it and it's fine. Let me see if I have a super colorful image that I can just again try to duplicate that on this type of media. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna leave it as such. I'm gonna leave it as such. Uh, but let me see. Now let's go ahead and switch over to like a ultra premium paper luster. Yeah, let's use that one. What the hell? It's going to use, here's what's going to happen. It's going to use the photo black more. Let's see. I love experimenting. Make sure that we use letter size. Set our borders back to half inch. And now i got to find me an image. I may have to look elsewhere. Okay, so we have some Australian... Uh, Landscapes here. No, that's not colorful enough. Let me look in my in my uh, my desktop. I had some images that were for um, doing demos, so that's what I want to use. Here we go. Okay, so these are some of the ones that I utilized earlier. This is a nice, maybe a nice one to do with that canvas. So let's go ahead and do that. But I want to make sure I don't crop it because there's a lot more to that image. Like that. Oh, that'll waste a lot of the canvas. Maybe not. Hmm. This is nice and, and picturesque looking. Yeah. Hmm. We'll try this. I had a bunch of these for um, use here. Now, these are from my phone. We don't want to use those. Here's some AI photos. No. No. Point lookout. Hmm. Let's see. Nah. Now these are my so maybe maybe we will do one of Harold Davies's uh, Davies's photos here. There we go. So this should be ice uh, bright enough for see what kind of results we get on that particular surface. Something like that. Why don't we just crop it to help with it? I want to fill the hole as much of, of the uh, 
field as possible. That's good enough. So we'll just go ahead and open that up in our editor and apply. We're going to make it even, even. Now that's fine. A little bit of sharpening. Now there's a problem already with that image. I don't think it's, let me see. It says that it is uh, 11,000, but I'm having issues right here. Of course, I applied 1,500 by, by accident. That was me. Okay. And we'll do the correct amount. And then we'll print it. I'm going to have to rush over there. Now, this area here is going to be high density. We'll see what it does. We'll see what it does. And if it does a really good job, then I'll go ahead and spray it when I get done uh, drying it fully uh, tonight, probably. And uh, we'll show you that result next week. But I'll show you the freshly printed results today. Okay, so that's that's going to be the next one. I'm going to have to do the same counter curling. We'll put that here because that's going to be the next type of media that we're using. Oh, I see. I see something already here. So the hand area are literally matte and the dense areas are have a lot more gloss. So there is a gloss differential issue. Again, this, I think this is meant to be printed on, on matte media. I'm going to switch it back. I, I don't want to really waste this stuff uh, simply because that black ink seems to be a bit glossy. So I'm going to go back to preview presentation matte. And uh, yeah, it loaded the paper profile. I love Q image, man. I don't have to worry about that. It just did it automatically for me. Gosh, what else can you ask for? Except this is curly as can be. Wow. Talk about some curly paper or canvas. Oh, I'll babysit it. And we'll print it. Come back to me. Now, for sublimation, you can print on canvas. You go to your local um, fabrics shop, like, like Joann's. Are they still around? They sell polyester canvas. It's already made out of polyester fiber. And you can literally sublimate directly to it. Okay, imagine you don't have to print it, you sublimate it with a heat press. It comes up beautiful. Oh, no, see, that was a misfeed. I didn't get there in time. No. Cancel. Printing on canvas is very, very um, got to reload this. I was talking too much and I missed the opportunity to hand feed it. And it fed it at an angle, so. Fifty percent. Seventy-five, eighty, ninety-five, and a hundred. Here we go. There we go. Oops. No. Nope. 
cancel. He didn't grab it. Look at that. It damaged it. So, example of things that can happen. This printer is not intended to print on this type of media. So, you know, you can succeed every once in a while. Most of the time, it will fail. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can fix this by counting curling, counter curling it. I think that might work. Let's try one more time. If it fails this time, then we give up. So again, the fact that you can get away once in a while with canvas, it depends on the canvas too. This canvas is very floppy, low quality. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, seventy-five, eighty, ninety, and a hundred. Okay. I want you to see. Look at how look at how floppy this is. So this is not a very what I would call high quality canvas. But if you look at, let me see if I can shine that light on that those dense areas, they have a sheen. The hands, none. Dull. Okay. So this has to be sprayed. And then if you really want to go to the point of mounting this, you will literally have to just, just spray glue it to a substrate, like maybe masonite, and that's it, and then frame it. Frame it without glass, of course. While that is printing, We're going to print on proper paper, Epson. So this is Epson Photo Quality Glossy. Ideal for photographic images. So of course, this is proven. This is for, for this type of printer. Uh, did I ever open this? Yes, apparently I did once. I just have a couple of sheets left. Oh, man. Super thin. Look at this. Wow. Talk about junk. This is from Epson. This is like this is like plain paper with a glossy coat on it. Wow. Not impressed at all. But we'll try it. I mean that's what this printer is made for for printing on glossy type coatings um so far what i am seeing very closely matches so this is again using the matte setting see how glossy that ink is so it's actually imparting a gloss to this normally dull surface canvas but it is cheap and floppy and uh, and also crooked look it misfed it it's 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 skewed oh well all right so let's go ahead and let's do the same one but i'm going to go ahead and uncrop it so that it prints the whole image more like this and let's see i think we're just supposed to pick the lowest quality glossy so so photo paper glossy right here 
And uh, yeah, it loaded the profile for it. Thank you again, Q Image. And uh, we'll print. And then we have premium semi gloss, semi gloss paper, premium semi gloss. And that is what we're going to use. And then we have from Printworks a matte photo paper. Let's see how that compares to the previous one from Canon as well as the one for. Um, from Staples that was absolutely fabulous. That really did work nicely. 70%, 77, 81. All right, 100. I may have to try I wanted to try a monochrome and see how that works. Maybe maybe later. I gotta look I it's very difficult for me to see clearly over there, so I'm going to go ahead and view in my photo folder. Might be a little bit easier to be able to see what I am looking at. Go to my photo drive. It's taking a bit longer, of course, because it's on glossy. How are we doing? Beautiful. Just please bear with me a second here. I'm trying to find some other types of photos. Some of them that I may not have ever even printed. Those are in a special drive that I have connected. But let's go ahead and look at this. Wow. It looks fantastic. It's just really super cheap looking I hate to say it but look at it it's really actually pretty good it's just super crappy I mean you would never who would sell this to someone you know but as far as you know if I was to mount this yeah very good really good quality again it's a nice 
the the gloss surface is a little motley looking it's not like glass smooth but it's still pretty good let's try this matte paper or what are we doing here as far as time oh we already went over our two hours that's fine we're going to try some of this matte paper and again so we had what several papers one of them was a a fantastic success that's that staple mat i think this is the printable side here again very floppy type paper so something like this printworks matte photo paper if you were doing graphic arts this probably would be a good choice to use It wouldn't put you in the poorhouse. It's, it's good enough for government work, as I say. And, you know, so I'm going to answer some of these questions while I am printing. So just bear with me. I just saw a good question there. I'm going to go back to like 2011 and see see what we have here. Ah, a little trip to Gettysburg. So let's let's just go and look at some of these images. So apparently, we took the family to Gettysburg. Let's go ahead and choose our regular matte paper. So what is the lowest quality matte paper? Premium presentation matte. No, that's too high. Uh, presentation mat, yeah, that's that's good enough. There's really no other mat choice here, so we'll choose that. And uh, let's try my pro my profile. Who cares? We'll go ahead and load say this image right here. Okay, that's it. We're just gonna go ahead and print that straight up. Didn't do much preparation, did I? I just chose presentation mat. It loaded my profile because that's what I used previously with that paper choice. We'll just see. We'll see how that particular combination works. I could have used the Epson uh, OEM presentation mat profile as as well. It didn't. It doesn't really matter at this point since I am experimenting basically. Now, this young lady right here, let me see. Oh, can't load it yet because it's still queuing. Let's wait for the ding dong. Remove this. This young lady right here was a young teen. She's going to be the mother of twin boys. And my wife just went to her baby shower. And she says she's as big as a balloon right now, <laughs> which, you know, no surprise. This is my son with that young lady, Alyssa. And I, I am willing to bet that this was, yeah, this is 2011. So Nathan wasn't even born yet. He was born in 2012. Notice the rendering that occurs. See, this is this is new newborn Nathan here. Um, there's my daughter Judy. This is my boy right there. My favorite boy. This is the mother-in-law, Mrs. Mooney. This is Brian. But anyway, so it did a rendering. Is what I'm trying to get at. Let's look at this. It's finished. Again, very floppy. Um, probably, possibly a little bit thicker than, than the standard plain paper. But again, look at even sky. This is very difficult to achieve, by the way. 
a very even sky like that. You will usually end up with any kind of posterization, even if there was a slight difference in, in contrast, not contrast, but density, and your printer has a problem reproducing the tone between this tone and this tone, it will create posterization. But you don't see that here. Maybe that sky is perfectly even, the same tone throughout. I really highly doubt that. But, yeah. So that's the Pennsylvania Memorial in, Ken, uh, in um, Gettysburg Battlefield. It's a fabulous place to visit, by the way. But floppy paper, you know. But again, it's good for government work. Good enough. And again, this this printer knocked it out. The only the only issue it had was with that canvas paper. No surprise there. I mean, it is not really designed for that officially. It's not even it's not even an official photo printer. That's why when you go to places such as uh, Hannah Mule or possibly um, uh, Canson or Ilford or um, Breathing Color and you buy some of their materials, you're not going to be given um, ICC profiles. They just won't make them for the printer because in their eyes, it's not a photo printer. Now, Red River, on the other hand, will produce um, media configuration files for the Pro 1000 for their papers. And if this was a printer that could be media configured, it would be, um, they would provide you with those files. Now, at least they provide you with profiles, where other companies won't even provide you with profiles for the 8550. Because in their eyes, it's just not a photo printer. They see it as an all-in-one. Okay. I think I have four sheets. Here, four. Let's see how this performs. We're going to run some proven, proven uh, photographs here. Ones that we have done in the past, possibly. If I can find something good, I'll go ahead and print it. I'm rendering some images here real quick. We'll do some quickies here. So I got... This is year... 15, 2015, so Nathan is like three years old. But we got millions of pictures of Nathan already. So this is a painting my daughter did on the on her wall. She's got a canvas there. Um, we'll do their front yard. We'll do this lamp. We'll do Mr. Nathan right there. That one needs a little bit of work. Oh, I have some. Oh, I went to a supermarket, apparently. <laughs> and let's see. And this one. We're going to go ahead and add, give this a little help. We'll do the exposure setting, auto exposure. We're going to add some sharpening. We'll do 150. Whoop. And then we're going to add, nope, wrong button. We're going to add 20 because this is going to be printed on matte. And it's a weird matte paper, so we'll hit OK, done, and OK. Then we will reload. We'll go back and apply the same setup to this. 
go ahead and do the exposure and this is you know for uh, overcast maybe it needs a bit more color a bit sharpening okay and okay and okay and then we'll reload then we'll see if the other ones need any help uh, this is fine i'm just going to add some sharpening to that two and 150 and for this paper this type of papers that i've been using that seems to really help i could see immediately the effect right there and again it, it really does help the appearance anytime you print on matte you should always uh over sharpen a little bit more than you would normally do say on a glossy paper this one will apply the exposure and the sharpening and a little bit more color saturation that is make that red really stand out so this is our front yard but that was quite a number of years ago it has changed a bit i was just there yesterday now while all of this stuff is printing you have any more or less questions last minute questions go ahead and post them now i'll let this load i'll come back to me and we'll see what we have here again that'll be the end that'll be the end of the show today once that is printed we'll come back and uh, take a quick look at them we're looking for you know quality um these papers are very low cost they are odd they are found let's see this one was What the heck was this? Oh, you know what? Oh. Ah, uh, let's do something a little bit more. I'm going to let those print. No wonder I was having a bit of a problem figure, figuring out which was the printable side. Both sides are printable. It's dual-sided paper. So I am going to do something... I am going to look, well, this queuing is queuing up. I'm going to look at my, remember my wedding photos? Remember those, those images that I made? We're going to look at those and see if I can print a double-sided page. That would be an album page. So we're going to look at photos and weddings. It's taking forever to load because it's four images. That's one thing you can do in QImage, folks. You can load images stacked on top of each other and print them. In Photoshop or Lightroom, I think Lightroom you can do that. But in Photoshop, you have to do one at a time. So that is the one of the advantages, at least for me, uh, that uh, QImage you know, offers you. The ability to be able to just print a uh, stacked set of uh, images. And once they all load, you're done. It's ready to be uh, sent to the printer. You just have to have enough paper. I want to look for some of those special um, sheets that I made. Here we go. So I gotta find it now in, in Q image. It's nearly time to reset the ink levels. Remember I told you that? See? And you just basically reset them. You just say, you know, already done or remind me later or whatever. I'm gonna do it later this afternoon or this week. So 
I'm going to go ahead and look for that folder. I'm just going to move it here to my other monitor. And we're going to go ahead and look for weddings. So I think one, one print's already done. Yep. This one. Mr. Nathan. Cute. And again, this paper's super cheap, super thin. Um, great for giveaways, that sort of thing. It's not something you would use for your most expensive uh, material. Definitely not. You would want to use a finer grade paper for those prints. But the fact that this printer can, you know, even, even um, begin to print things like that, it's just, to me, amazing. Totally amazing. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and load the, loading all of those. We're going to go ahead and remove all of this. And we're going to choose borderless. Shocking, isn't it? I'm choosing borderless. No, no, we cannot have a, a border. So we're going to do this. I'm going to, let's just do my second daughter's. Boom. So unfortunately, because I am cropping, it's going to block. So we're going to go ahead and undo cropping. And originally, these pages would have been rectangular. I always size them for that. So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to flip the paper over like this. Okay, not, not this way, but like this. So let's load this. Okay, so here are, here's the yard. And the lamp. Okay, so put this here. We got a sheet loaded. I'm going to print this. It's going to print borderless, and I am going to flip the paper like this. Let's let it load. Then I will load the next image, which will be the one right here. People were wondering um, how to approach dual-sided printing. And technically speaking, you would want to dry that first side thoroughly. Your printer better be spick and span. The roller system better be super clean. Otherwise, you're going to transfer gunk onto the printed side because you're going to be flipping the paper over. So we're going to remove that one. And load this one.
Now we'll take that paper, came out this way. So I'm gonna flip it over this way. You gotta be careful, otherwise you will end up with a flipped image. So hopefully we did this correctly. <laughs> So always, always possibility of error. I'll turn this off for now. Save the battery. Sorry. Hit OK. Let it load. Come on now. I said print. Now what? I think she froze. Here we go. I think she woke up. <laughs> Here we go. Now it's printing. Sometimes. I think I I think I need to upgrade my computer to something more powerful. Again, I have reduced the number of um, um, cores to just two, just to make sure this doesn't happen when I'm in, when I am not streaming. So anyway, any advice at photographing the eclipse? Well, through the proper filtration in a telescope, if you want to use it, or a telephoto lens, but you better be able to at least put some kind of neutral density filter in front of your uh, lens to just reduce the amount of light. Once you get down to the point where you just see the corona, you should be able to basically just use your regular lens and uh, let almost, I don't know whether you can use auto exposure or you can manually uh, do the exposures, but, you know, do as many um, bracketings as you can during that magic period before it flips over and begins to move out of the way and the sun begins to. I've never seen a full eclipse. I saw one where about about a fifth of the sun was still left. Um, and, um, yeah. I've never done it. <laughs> yeah, I I would recommend you just go there and check to see. And go to the other office supply stores as well. Um, places like Micro Center, they are not going to have uh, like house brands that you can buy at a much lower cost. They're going to be selling you the expensive papers. Perfect. Yes. That came out perfect. So this would be, hang on, off topic, Brian4n says, but anyone anyone able to get around the 52 error on the Canon Pro 1000? Which one is that? Did you, did you Google it to see what it was? Let me show you this before we try to answer you. So here is the group shot of the wedding party of my daughters uh, and Greek husband. This is Greg, Gregory uh, uh, Papalukas. This is my daughter. This is my son. And uh, yeah, this was a wonderful wedding. So this will be a page for an album. And then you flip it over. The next page, you see, you see any marks? So we printed this one first, and I didn't really let it dry fully, as you can see. Oh, by the way, see the overlay right here? So that would be like the cover picture for the album. And then you flip, you flip it over. So you open the album like this, and you open it over. 
and this is the first page, then you go up to the second page, and so on. So you notice there's no marks anywhere. People always ask about the Pro, I mean the 8550 roller marks issues. Well, I haven't had any, so I guess I'm lucky in that regard, possibly. But this is it. So this seems to be a pretty good um, dual coated paper. Yeah, color rendition is good. Pretty accurate to what I had uh, viewing it in QImage. So there you go. That's how you do. But make sure that you do borderless if you want to have a edge to edge. So if your if your paper size is exactly the same dimensions as your image size, then you can print the whole thing borderless. Okay. And it should be just like this, except with no borders at all. Now you could, of course, apply some printing description of the photo or whatever you want to add to these borders if you choose to go the border route. Okay. Well, we only had an issue with the canvas, and that was predictable. I knew that was going to happen the minute I saw that canvas. But as you see, it's it's a great performance. Let's go ahead and look for this uh, Pro, Pro 1000 error. So we'll open up um, the internet. Pro 1000 error. What was that? I got the memory of a of a um, goldfish. Fifty two hundred. According to this. Fifty two hundred error mainly due to low ink levels and also because there is a faulty cartridge or problems with the logic board of the printer. In short, it means that the ink cartridge that is installed in your Canon printer is either empty or close to empty. There's other explanatory um, options here. This is from Canon. He's getting a, a 5100 error printing at 17 by 22. Oh, that's a 5100. Okay. We're, we're looking at the 50. I'm sorry. Hang on one sec. You said 5200, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. Canon Pro 1000 5200. Error 5200. There's some videos. Yeah, so that's has to do with the amount of ink. Well, now, what are you, you know, tell me what you are experiencing. So thanks, Jose. I started experiencing it when my black, matte black was empty and replaced it with the OEM one. And that, that fixed it, then what's, then you don't have an issue then, right? Okay. Is that the case? Please let me know, and then we can just stop here, uh, unless there's something else that needs to be addressed. So you replaced it, and that was the end of that. Yeah. So, okay. Sounds like that was the issue. Uh, there's a multitude of errors that you have to deal with with uh, these printers and uh, your best option is simply to google it uh, if you have the user manual they're listed right there i have the user manual available it's over like 800 plus pages uh, of information so you can go ahead and uh, download that from my facebook group uh, if you remember um, and it provides you with every single error you could possibly encounter with a pro a 1,000, as well as what to do, and a ton of other information.
Wait a minute. I was able to clear the 5200 by removing all the ink cartridges, replacing all of them with OEM. So what were you using? What do you mean with OEM? Were you using something else prior to OEM? Replace all of them? It was fixed for about five minutes and then printed one piece of paper. Then it went back to 5200. Hmm. If the new card didn't fix, try power off reset to clear the error. I've tried that. I've unplugged for one hour, plugged it back in, still the same error. Yeah, clean the contacts. Take that chip out and clean it. Use a Q-tip. Use some, I don't have it here, oh, right here. Use some electronic contact cleaner, not just alcohol. Use real electronic contact cleaner, a Q-tip, and clean those contacts out. If it's something like a, for example, like this, a, a actual print head, clean the back, the contact points, with a makeup pad, um, wet it with that contact cleaner. Do this. Like every six months, it'll become a a a way to uh, prevent or at least um, diminish the chances of any kind of recognition error. That's always happens when a pin that's touching a contact cannot connect with it because something's obstructing it. It could be dust, it could be oil, it could be ink, it could be uh, you know uh, oxidation, it could be anything. Okay. I don't think it has to do with the printhead. The contacts are in the the contacts are in here, the chip. And this chip, when you enter it into the slot, contacts another set of contacts. Okay. Those are pretty much unreachable uh, unless you're really good and you got some long Q-tips and are very, very careful. Okay. Um, but not the printhead. The printhead, you would get a different error if the printhead contacts are not being recognized. And that would be these right here. This is a similar, see that? Three groups, four each. This is 12 colors. This is for the Pro 1. And right here in the back, that plate right there. Those are all your contact points. Each contact corresponds to one pin. It's a spring-loaded pin on the carriage itself. You clean that, and then you very carefully clean the contacts, also the pins. You got to do that either at the beginning, the very first time you use it, because you never know. You just never know. And I think that's going to be it. We've gone way past our normal time. I just want to now tell you guys that I am limited to a certain number of hours per month. And otherwise, they have to charge me or they have to cut me back. And so I have to be careful and stay within my limit. Otherwise, I have to pay a monthly fee. I don't want to do that. Unless unless this, this live stream is generating at least like 30-something dollars every week, there's no way that I can afford to pay that in order to provide me with, you know, a, a higher number of hours, the broadcast hours. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll leave it at that. We can discuss that further later at another another time. So let's go ahead and provide you guys with hopefully you guys are enjoying this another slideshow while I sign off. And uh, if you like what you see, if you like what we did today, if you enjoy the day, please leave a little thank you note. And I will post those or bye-bye, see you next week, whatever you want to post. And I will post it along uh, with the slideshow as it progresses. And that'll be it. Then we'll see you next week. Everybody have a wonderful week. Bye-bye, everyone. And happy printing, of course, as always.